Hello my friends, I know I'm not in a garage, but well, I had a Desert X for one season or 9,000 kilometers almost, so it's more than 5,000 miles and I had a very nice and good trip which I took almost a month, so I think I have enough experience right now to do this longish term review so what's good and what's bad about the bike but i'm not gonna talk like this because this is my workspace so we are gonna go like this and we're gonna be talking like from this view first thing i want to take very clear everybody says that ducati desert x is like a yamaha t7 competition i want to make it clear no i do not think so i used to have africa twin uh, adventure sports which one is a heavy and uh, uh, bigger bike of the africa twin line and i think this is a direct competition of the uh, africa twin the regular one this is very simple look at the price look at the weight and look at the engine horsepower and you will see that it's pretty much very very close so t7 doesn't even get close to it so whoever thinks that t7 is the competition for the ducat desert desert xo opposite just just take that mind away it's not it's just not t7 it's much smaller and weaker bike it's not smaller by the size but it's uh, smaller by the engine and it's uh, just not the same a category of the bikes so what i like about the bike i like the height of the bike the seat is 880 centimeters and i think it's very perfect for me i like the way the foot pegs are positioned and i like the way the handlebars are on the bike that makes me sit very very perfect i think the bike is very good for the adventure style riding especially if you are looking towards the off-road or not only the tarmac and pavement because if you want to ride tarmac and pavement i think there is much better bikes than this this is the bike to draw, go more adventure style going a little bit off-road or forest roads and stuff like this but don't get me wrong this is not a light bike this is a 223 kilos with 90 percent of fuel tank and fuel tank is 21 but anyway it's 223 kilos or 492 pounds so it's not a light bike so going to the off-roading to the roads where it's like one lane road I don't think it's a very good idea it's doable definitely it is but it's not a cross or enduro bike so i love the way corners i love uh, the way it handles it i love the way it's nimble it is so everything uh very awesome just don't forget we're not paul taris we're not chris birch we cannot go wheelies all over the dirt roads and the grass otherwise it's an awesome awesome bike to do that i love the way they have everything set up it's uh, perfect for you riding sitting or if you need to stand up it feels very very natural for example if you were like would be riding a uh, Ducati V4S it's total different because to stand up from that bike you need to take an extra effort because your knees are much more bent the ground clearance of the bike 250 millimeters awesome that's what we need when they were putting the wheels on this motorcycle they were really thinking adventure or off-roading that's why they have a, a 21 inch up front and 18 in back spoke wheels it looks awesome i think but one thing i don't like when you have to clean it and because this chain is lubed with the oil this oil gets splashed on the on the inside rim and oh my god if you didn't have the spoke wheels before then you don't know what i'm talking about but if you had it then i'm then you know what i'm talking about it's gonna take for you a half hour maybe one hour to clean that wheel properly i mean you don't want to spray very hard chemicals because every everything's so close over there i mean all the sprockets all the, all the chain and then you know those all gaskets i mean this or like the rings like all, everything over there you don't want to get this uh harsh chemicals inside so you like need supposed to wash it with the mild soap or something like that and that takes forever i mean there's no chance i'm like cleaning it while i'm traveling i just can do it after i come back home so that's it after one month or whatever i travel then it's so 
that's one more thing but like i said this is good and bad so this is just comes in both ways this is okay the suspension is good i love it it's fully fully adjustable rear and front full adjustable but you know how often we're gonna adjust it there i know there are people which one like really know how to do it and really uh, can feel that i cannot feel that much difference you know like if it's too much load i would feel it but i would adjust probably one or two times that's it i'm done i always leave it the way it is when i am done one time usually it's like this talking about engine there is good thing and a bad thing so good thing that there's a testa strata 11 degrees degrees twin l desmo 937 cubic centimeters 110 horsepower or 81 kilowatts if you're in europe and it's uh max torque is uh, 92 newton meters one thing that horsepower the biggest the horsepower the peak they have at 9250 rpms how often you ride that rpms with the adventure bike i'm not sure i don't and the max torque is 6500 rpms that's much better because if you're going like off-road in 6500 rpms it's more doable i think it's pretty good but we have two things about the engine it's awesome that we have it because it's used in a lot of different motorcycles through the time in the ducati so the engine is really proved and trustful but comes with another one thing it's a ducati owned desmo engine what means that you're gonna have to do a desmo services every 30,000 kilometers so hello ducati bye bye money that means this is expensive service but we're gonna have to do it uh if you don't do it at the ducati that means you're losing your warranty i chose not to do it not yet it's i mean 9,000 kilometers almost i'm gonna have to do it 30,000, but i think i will do it myself and i'm gonna make a video on it but that's coming in the near future maybe not that near maybe three four years i'm not sure when am i gonna be able to make this 30,000. even the engine is 937 cubic centimeters and 110 horsepower it doesn't feel that powerful for me i know it would be way too much power on the uh, gravel but it doesn't feel that much power i'm not going to talk a lot of specifications about the bike because you can read it yourself just look in the google look in the ducati websites whatever everything is set over there i'm just going to talk about my experience right now talking about the riding adventure style kind of in the enduro style so i love that the windshield is not that tall so you can get a lot of wind into your helmet but if you're going to be riding on a tarmac that's gonna be at opposite thing then you're gonna get a lot of all kind of uh, turbulence in your helmet so it's good for off-road riding if you've seen titanic you always can do a titanic thing Flake. you're going on the road so you're gonna have the wind going into your face with a nice music don't forget the bike is presented as uh, presented as enduro adventure not a tarmac motorcycle so since you know that i'm a tall guy it's i'm 194 so the seat height 880 millimeters is pretty good but just keep in mind if you're a short guy in china korea or taiwan they make uh, uh, those motorcycles straight out of the factory 850 millimeters so you're saving three centimeters so maybe you have a point go to asia and buy a motorcycle over there another one thing i want to talk about the wingless yeah so it's okay for the hot weather and i definitely think that ducati thought about it and they understand that it's like you know when you hot and it blow, blows the hot uh, air from the engine then you get a little hot so they decided they want to do the wingless so push the wind hot wind away okay what's gonna happen if we're gonna go in the rain and we when we're traveling a lot it happens a lot so with multi multi v4s multi strata v4s yeah they had the winglets which one were going in the legs you're riding a lot with the big 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 shoes boots uh, adventure boots they understand your feet get stinky so they decided in the rain they're gonna wash your feet but what's happening with desert decks look at that they made those winglets in a different place they made over there by the tank and when we were going in the rain all the water gets caught on these winglets and guess where the water goes to 
Yes, you guessed it right. It goes straight into your crotch. What the Italians decided now? They gonna go just to the roots and they just gonna wash your legs just straight from where they are growing from? Or if you're gonna go adventuring and that means you're gonna go to the dirt roads, no roads like grass and meadows and whatever farmlands and you're gonna get the rain and a lot of cows were over there then what you're gonna be get you're gonna get a natural fertilizer then you can grow your garden you can grow tomatoes carrots whatever and it's free here we go then when you get everything gonna grow then you're gonna go and get a new job then you're gonna make a lot of money to buy a new custom accessories for your desert x and if you don't know, so I'll tell you right now, the accessories for Desert X, if they're genuine Ducati, they are very, very expensive. They, I would say, even crazy expensive. I was looking at it when I was buying uh, this motorcycle and I thought, you know what, I'll just wait one year and I'll just wait until the aftermarket people gonna jump in and gonna get some better prices. And I was right, now it's much more better prices for everything. In order to get a hard luggage, you have to get the frame for the luggage and then the, the same the luggage. So that's a lot of luggage right now. Anyway, that's gonna put you up to two and a half thousand euros. That's a lot of money just for the luggage. I mean, you can buy a pretty good used bike for that money. All right, then if you're gonna look for the engine crash bars, then it's gonna bring you up to five, 600 euro. Okay, look at the water pump, it's exposed. Okay, then you need to protect that one. If you don't care about the crash bars and you just wanna get a water pump protection, you cannot do it because it just goes together with the crash bars. So that brings you up to six, 700 euros. That's crazy expensive. You can get the, the aftermarket uh, crash bars with the water pump protection for 350 euros. That's uh, half price. Talking about another one thing, what I'm thinking that Ducati didn't think correctly, that's a cell phone charger outlet in front. You know what? They put one amper, one amper outlet, one amper USB outlet. Really? When I was traveling, I barely could charge my phone. I mean, if I need to stop a little bit more often, then my phone wouldn't charge to the full during all day. So this is, I think, not a good thing. I think it's bad thinking. I think they could have put just two amper and that would be much better anyway when well, they have another one outlet which one is behind the passenger seat and it's uh, six amper so it gets much more charging that's a solution an option but i think in front they really should have one much stronger uh, outlet what more i don't like about this desert x that would be a sound for muffler i mean come on now this is almost one liter bike and sounds like a moped. I understand that probably that is, you know, like this Euro 5 emission standards and everything, but if you would take the Africa Twin, oh my God, Africa Twin sounds like a dream. I mean, so much low sound and like this grunt or whatever it's just like wow i love it so it's kind of sad that you need to look for something else and you know you can buy a termignoni slip on but that's expensive it's about one thousand thousand euros and if you want to get old dcat system which one is only racing legal it's not a street legal that's gonna put you about to 3000 euros so it's crazy and you know what i hear that just the slip on it doesn't make a sound good but if you do the old decat system but you know what i'll stop right there i'm not paying 3000 euros just for the sound no thank you so now let's talk a little bit about one more thing this ear filter because this engine is a l type so they have a really nice space and gap between the two cylinders it's underneath the gas tank in order to change the or clean the air filter it's gonna take a lot of time what ducati says it's supposed to be done by the dealer 
we uh, supposedly buying this motorcycle for traveling for the long trips and if we are somewhere in Africa guess where can we find the dealer probably we could find it in South Africa not probably I guarantee we could or we need to go back to Europe otherwise if we are changing the air filter by ourselves then we are voiding the Ducati warranty that's our traveling ends right there if we don't want to break the terms of the warranty then we're supposed to bring the our motorcycle to the dealership and have it changed by them there is some things which ones are, I think worth to mention uh, I think some of them were kind of funny some of them it's just probably worth to know so one of the funny things that Ducati like uh, does a lot of things which when they say like it's supposed to be done at the authorized service center for example they invented the handlebars which one has off-road and on-road positions but that's supposed to be done by the Ducati authorized service center oh, okay it's funny you know I cannot like unscrew a little bit loosen up the uh, handlebar clamps and just adjust it whatever I want to that's a little funny <laughs> that's okay one thing what I think it's worth to be mentioned so that the tank filler plug or tank uh, cap whatever you guys call it uh, it can be closed only with the key inserted in so don't try to close it without the key inside because you might break this little lever and it's not going to be closing properly let's talk a little bit about the option for the ducati desert x which one was introduced when they were they introduced the motorcycle last year and that was the ducati auxiliary gas tanks this is 8 liter addition to your existing 21 liter which one you have in front tank when you think wow that's awesome i'm like planning some time to do the trips to africa and i thought wow this is really cool to have some extra fuel but there is a catch when you have those auxiliary tanks installed you cannot put any kind of panniers maybe somebody gonna come up with some kind of an idea but neither i can put my moscomoto because the tail of the bike gets way too wide or neither i can put the ducati original panniers you have the extra fuel but you can have, cannot have the luggage for you so if you are a long distance traveler in remote countries it's just not the option for you i understand maybe people who's racing with this bike it's okay for them to have it and i bet they are very happy about it but just how many people out of 10,000 who will buy this motorcycle will be racing it uh, i think maybe two three five max 10 so that's like not even one percent it's a catch it's a thing it looks cool but it's good to know that it's not really compatible with any traveling panniers or a luggage options so that's one more thing so after that much talking and uh, trying to show you guys what i learned about this bike you might think that you know this bike has a lot of things which were not, not really good and you're probably gonna ask me like would i buy this bike again am i happy with this bike and my answer will be yes i'm very happy with this bike and definitely i would have buy it again so this is the bike i like this is the bike i'm gonna ride for some time but it's gonna be some interesting news coming next year for my adventures because it's gonna be a new bike which one i already purchased and i already ordered and it's being made so uh the i will be riding some part of the trip with ducati desert x and then uh, doing the during the trip it will be changed to another one bike because the road's gonna get much much worse the road's gonna be really much steeper and much more challenging so i'm gonna need to have a lighter bike this is the ducati desert x kind of longish term review i i hope you guys learned something i hope uh, it gave you some different look at this bike i love the way this bike looks i mean like it's always big pleasure to look at it i'm very happy that you watched my video and happy new year's happy and merry christmas for you because it's coming if you watch 
not watching before that is before if you're watching after so okay it's in the past but doesn't matter so have a great great next coming season have a great year and i'll see you in the next video so goodbye and see you later but if you watch the video to the, till the end then it's a bonus part my desert x right now in a service because I had an accident. Uh, not gonna go into the details too much, who's guilty, who's not. Uh, we leave it right there without any mentions. But uh, I met one very, very speedy, racy, turbocharged bicycle, which one is made to carry some things, so it's very thick. And it just damaged my bike enough, so it had to be out of the road and to be fixed tank is dented my rim is uh, scratched badly needs to be changed my brake the lever the foot brake lever rear brake lever is bent and uh, some little extra scratches my handlebars are not straight even my heated grips are uh, cut uh, the problem with the new bikes is that uh, you cannot get the parts very fast and cannot get fixed very fast so my bike from uh, the middle or maybe end of september already in a shop in an authorized shop and it's getting repaired by the insurance so uh, that's why i cannot do some extra videos which one i was planning to do i was planning to do the air filter changing and some another one like moscow moto bags videos but i can do that because i have the problem which one you see over here now have a good day and bye bye Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for subscribing. That was Team Oil 2, and I'll see you later.